ourselves a patchwork quilt. Fabric patchwork is really old. Early examples of it have been found in Chinese and Egyptian tombs, a lot of it being dated to 5,000 years ago, so the concept has been around for quite a while. But unlike traditional fabric patchwork, we are not going to be sewing little pieces of fabric together, we're just going to be crocheting those images into a single block. So this year, no sewing at all. I know a lot of you are trying really hard to use up the yarn you have in your stash this year, so consider this patchwork blanket a really good scrap project. Every single block, and we're going to do one each month, is a great opportunity to use up the scraps that you've been accumulating over the last couple of years. Make sure you border each square with the same color. So for me, I'm going to border every single one of my squares in white. That way, no matter what you do color-wise for each of these squares, if they all have the same border color, your entire blanket will have a unified, neat and tidy look when it's all done. So, what's the first square? Well, we are going to begin with the super traditional nine patch. The nine patch! Quite literally what it says. It is nine patches of color, nine perfect little squares, and there are a lot of ways you can actually put this pattern together. So you only have to make one. I'm stressing that right now. You only need to make one of these for the January square, but I went ahead and made a couple more so that you can get an idea of how different that pattern can look depending on what you want to do with the colors. This nine patch is built in a checkerboard sort of fashion. So I've only used two colors, and most of the blocks we're going to do this year are either two or three colors, not including the border. So if you're picking yarn specifically for this pattern, you can make a special color palette for it. Think two or three colors per block, and you can pick your colors accordingly. But like I said, if you are using up your scraps, let me show you what a nine patch looks like with every color of the rainbow. So that's a nine patch using any old color I could find in my stash. In fact, I kind of went with a rainbow feeling. I went red, pink, orange, yellow, green, green, blue, blue, purple. There's nine patches, so each one of these is a different color. Again, bordered the whole thing in one color, and I love how that one looks. Very different to the checkerboard fashion. And here's the same pattern, but made to look like a cross. So instead of doing the middle square a different color like we did on the checkerboard, you do the middle stripe all one color, and the two middle pieces on the other side of it the same color, and you get a really cool cross effect. So same nine patch square, if you change up the colors you can get a completely scrappy look, a checkerboard look, or even a cross look. So have fun when you decide to put your colors together, you can get a lot of different looks with the same square. So I'm going to show you how to do a checkerboard version of this pattern, but I'm going to explain to you how you can do any of the other two that I showed you, or even some of these other little ones we're going to stick in here down below, some other little color graphs I put together. You're definitely going to want to make yourself a little graph to follow. I'll explain more of that as we get into the tutorial, and I'll talk a little bit more about fabric, or I should say yarn in this case, and how much of each color you're going to need. If you really enjoy our show and you have a lot of fun with us here, then consider supporting us. You can subscribe, Click the like button, share our videos with your friends, or you can purchase a pattern at our Etsy shop, or join and become a channel member. You'll find more information in the description box down below, links to our Etsy shop, and also how to join, and there's more information if you click that join button below this browser. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up the January 9 patch square together. For each of my calendar squares, I will be using a 5.5 millimeter hook, also known as an I or a 9 in the US, a size 5 in the UK. In addition to your hook, it's always a good idea to have a pair of scissors and a yarn needle on hand. All of my squares will be made using an acrylic size 4 medium weight yarn because I have a whole lot of it <laughs> and I love the colors that it comes in. All of my squares will also have a white border. So I will be using the same border color throughout. I recommend you do the same thing so that when you put your blanket together, you have a nice unified look. Including your border, each of your squares in the 2020 blanket will require 
87 to 90 yards of yarn each. That's about 45 grams. But of course, you're going to be using different colors. So in the case of our nine patch block, each of these little squares is 10 yards of yarn around 5 grams. So if you were making the multicolored one, you'd need 10 yards or 5 grams of each color, including your border. If you're making a bicolor square, so the checkerboard or even the cross version, you're going to have a color A, which will have 5 blocks, and a color B, which will have 4 blocks. Color A will require around 50 yards, 25 grams of color, of yarn, <laughs> and color B will require around 40 yards, 20 grams of yarn. You're still going to need 10 yards or 5 grams of your border color. And like I said, I'll be using white for mine. Before we start crocheting, I recommend that you take a moment to quickly sketch out a color guide for yourself to follow. So if you're doing the checkerboard or the cross or the multicolored square, sketch out a quick square shape, break it into three rows of three blocks each, and quickly sketch in the colors that you want to follow. This will help keep you sort of on track because we're not building the square left to right, right to left. We're actually going to be building it a bit differently so that we can get that truly patchy kind of look going. So I highly recommend making yourself a quick little color guide to follow. You'll find it really helpful. All right, a quick glance at the guide. We're actually going to be starting with the middle set of blocks. So we're going to start in the bottom middle of our square. So whatever colored block that is on your little color gram, you're going to grab that color and your hook. So for me, that's going to be blue. We're going to start with a slip knot. I'll get that out of the way. And we're going to chain 14 to begin. Once you have 14 chains, you're going to skip the first three chains from the hook, find the fourth one, and double crochet into it. We will be using the double crochet stitch throughout this entire square pattern. That chain three, or chain two, and a little sort of base chain, is going to count as a double crochet. You're going to double crochet into each of the chains all the way back to the beginning, and including that turning chain at the end, you will have 12 double crochets at the end of row one. At the end of row one, you should have something that looks like this. That's 11 double crochets plus your turning chains for a total of 12 stitches or 12 double crochet. At the end of each row, we're going to chain two. And that's the magic number. So we're only going to be using a two turning chain in this pattern because we want the sides of our squares to be a little on the sort of uh, tight side. So chain two at the end of every row counts as a double crochet. So chain two. Every time you chain two and you start to work backwards, Remember to skip the first stitch because the chain two counts as a double crochet. So if it helps, chain two and then count one, two, three, you're going to skip that stitch. You're going to work into the fourth stitch away from the hook or chain two, skip the first actual stitch and double crochet into the next one. So depending on what's easier for you to see, you can just turn double crochet into the fourth stitch away from the hook or chain two, turn, skip the first stitch because it's accounted for, double crochet into the next stitch and in each stitch back. And you have to keep that in mind going forward <laughs> because that is how every single one of these little blocks is created because you want to maintain an even stitch count of 12 double crochet in each row. Magic number is 12. So two chains to turn, that counts as a double crochet, and every row needs to have 12 stitches in it. When you get to the end of the row, you're going to find the top of the turning chain from the previous row. So depending on how you want to look at it, doesn't matter which of those loops you grab, if you want to stick your hook under two loops or just one, but you're going to double crochet into the top of the turning chain. So don't forget to do that. And then count them up at the end of every row to make sure you still have 12, and that includes the turning chains. At the end of every row, we chain two, 
and turn. That chain two always counts as a double crochet and that first stitch, that first real stitch there, counts as the base of that chain two or pretend that you double crocheted into it. So you always skip that first stitch. If it helps, you can count one, two, three, four stitches away from your hook and double crochet into that fourth stitch. So however it helps to look at it, chain two, turn, skip the first stitch, double crochet into the next stitch, or chain two, turn, and count four stitches away, double crochet into that one. You're gonna double crochet into each stitch all the way across. Don't forget the top of the turning chain when you get there, and make sure you have 12 stitches, that includes your turning chains, at the end of each row. When you get across to the end of a row, double check that you got the top of the turning chain. So here's our little turning chains if you have to flip them over and look at them from the right side. Double crochet into the top, doesn't matter which loop you grab, and then count them up. So your turning chains counts as a double crochet, and then you should have 11 actual double crochets, so 12 stitches in total. So that's three rows complete. You want to do three more rows. Chain two, turn at the end of every row. Always skip that first stitch, double crochet into the next stitch, and in each stitch across, including the top of the turning chain, and I'll see you at the end of row six. At the end of row six, you should still have 12 stitches in each row. Remember, one of those double crochets is that chain two turning, so don't forget to count that. But you should have six rows. So each of the blocks in our little nine patch is going to be six rows deep by 12 stitches long. I've already uh, run out of yarn, which was perfect timing. <laughs> so if you're changing colors uh, because you're making the checker block like mine or the multicolored patch block like the other one I showed you, then you're going to fasten off to change colors. However, if you're making the one that's in the cross shape, you are not going to fasten off. You are going to continue to chain two, turn, and continue working that double crochet pattern all the way across until you have a long piece, and you can see it here, that's 18 rows tall by 12 stitches across. So if you're making the cross pattern, keep double crocheting, don't change colors, don't snip your yarn. So we're just changing colors if we're making the checkerboard or the super multicolored patch block. So for the rest of us, changing colors, you just snip your yarn, fasten off. You can take a moment to weave in your tails and you can flip your block. We're going to join our new color in that last stitch right there. As mentioned, we're going to be working on the middle stripe of colors first. So if you're changing colors like I am, we're now working on the middle block. So we're gonna take our new color. We're going to make a slip knot. And we're going to join in the top of the last stitch we made. So that's the last stitch of row six. You're going to join with a slip knot, or a slip stitch, I should say. And when you're joining your yarn, keep that tail towards the inside of your work so that you can pull on it, and that will keep the knot from falling out the side and making the edge of your work look a little messy. So just pull that tail to the inside. We're going to chain two because those two chains counts as a double crochet. You see that it's uh, anchored in that first stitch, so that's another way to look at it. You can see that that first stitch is accounted for because of those two chains. I'm just going to work over my tail as I work, and now I'm going to double crochet into each stitch all the way across. Double crochet into the top of the turning chain, so don't miss it when you get there, including those two chains that began that count as a double crochet. You should still have 12 stitches at the end of this row. You're going to chain two, turn, and continue to double crochet until you've made another six row block of double crochet built right onto the first one. At the end of row 12, or six more rows of double crochet, but in our new color, we've completed the center block of our nine patch square. So you can take your scissors, fasten off. Remember, if you're making the cross pattern, you're still just crocheting with that original color. So you're not changing colors if you're making the cross pattern. But for the rest of us, we are fastened off. So we've got six rows of the first color, six rows of the second color. Every row still has 12 stitches in it. And now you can weave in that tail, flip it over, and you're going to grab the center top color. So for me, I'm going back to blue. 
grab the middle color, so the middle color of your top row, for me that's blue, make a slip knot, we're going to join with a slip stitch just like we did before in the top of that last double crochet we made. So you turned your work. You're now joining your new color with a slip stitch. Keep that string and pull it so that you keep that knot to the inside. Makes for a nice even edge. Chain two, that counts as a double crochet. That first stitch is accounted for and you can really see it because we joined our yarn there. Double crochet into the next stitch and each across. Don't forget the top of the chain two. And you're gonna work six more rows of double crochet. Remember to chain two, turn at the end of every row. All right, we've completed the middle section now of our nine patch. If you're making the cross, you'll have 18 rows in total of your main cross color. And if you're doing it checkerboard or multicolored like me, each of these blocks will be six rows tall by 12 stitches wide. You can take a moment to snip your yarn, fasten off, weave in your tails, and the next block we're going to build is this one down here, so the bottom right. We're going to work the bottom right color corner square now of our nine patch, for me that's pink, and we're going to do that by turning our middle section on its side like this. So it might help to turn it, turn your square kind of color graph as well. And now we're working this one, we're going to build it on top of this existing square here. So we're going to take that bottom right patch color, for me that's pink. We're going to join it in the bottom. So the bottom of those chains, you should have a whole bunch of them running along there. Join it just in the bottom of those chains. Same thing with a slip knot. Pull that string and the knot to the inside. Chain two. So the block is constructed exactly the same way. It'll be a chain two turn at the end of every row. Every chain two counts as a double crochet. You want 12 stitches in each row and you're gonna do 12 rows of double crochet. But here's the thing, we're going to be crocheting it onto the edge of this block. Obviously, we're gonna stop right here. So we're gonna work 12 stitches across this block or two double crochet per edge of each row. So if it's a chain two or a double crochet, you're gonna be working two stitches into it. If you're doing the cross, and so this whole thing is one color, you might want to take a moment, count out your first six rows, and just put a little marker right at the top of your sixth row so you know where to stop. So a little visual help is always a good thing. So we've joined our yarn, we've chained two, we want to work another double crochet, so it helps. There's the first row, we're going to work another double crochet into the edge, and when you're working into the edges of your squares, you don't want to work around the stitch. You want to bisect the stitch. You're going to stick your hook in through some of the loops of the stitch, but not all the way around the stitch because you don't want to create great big gaps in your block. So you want to work through the stitch. So here's that was row one. Here's row two. We're going to work two double crochet across the edge of this row. And it doesn't have to be exacting. You can just put your hook in the next natural spot. There's no fine science to this. You just want to work an even 12 stitches across the side of that first block by bisecting the stitch. So you're going to stick your hook through the stitch. See what I did there? Work two at the end of every row. Here's the next one. So I'm going to work. I'll just stick my hook through those two side loops and make a stitch. And you can tell if you've gone around the whole stitch because there's the whole stitch. And if I were to work around it, I would have to work through that space, but that would end up pulling up the stitch and we don't want to do that. So you're just going to slowly work away at working 12 double crochets evenly. So remember your chain two counts. So 11 actual double crochets up the side of that raw edge. If this is the first time you've ever done this, just take your time. It might take a little getting used to, but after a while it will make perfect sense. So there's a couple more. And you see sort of I'm working neatly here. 
I've got two more rows and I want to work two double crochet across the edge of each row. And I want to time my last double crochet to be right at that junction of color. So I'm just going to make it happen any way I can. And I'm going to work my last stitch right into where that stitch meets the other color. So there you go. Take a moment. Uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Make sure you've got twelve stitches. And now you can resume the regular block. Chain two, turn, Make sure you skip that first stitch because it's accounted for. Double crochet into the next stitch. Double crochet in each stitch across. Don't forget the top of the turning chain. It's just like the other blocks we've built. And you're going to do six rows. Each row will have 12 stitches in it. At the end of row six, you should have six rows. Each row will have 12 stitches in it. You can snip your yarn. Fasten off, take a moment to weave in your tail and lay your block back down to make sure that you're working. You're not going to get confused. So we started by doing the middle section. We've just worked the bottom right, but of course we're working now in this direction. And the next one we're going to do is the, <laughs> this is the bottom right. For me, I'm doing the checkerboard, so <laughs> it doesn't really matter. <laughs> bottom right, middle and then top right. So the middle one for me will be blue because every time I add a square, it will be different. It'll be the other color. So I shouldn't ever match two colors together. So obviously the next one I'm gonna be doing is blue, but that's why I say it's good to have a little visual color reference so that you know where you're at as we work. All right, we're joining our next color. Same thing, make a slip knot. And this is now my favorite part of the build of the nine patch. So as we add each successive patch, we're going to be not only attaching it across the bottom, but also attaching it up the side. And this is such a cool way to do a square by square kind of blanket. So if you wanted to expand on this concept to make a huge blanket, you totally could. Uh, and this is why I say this is a fun way to make patchwork without having to do any sewing. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to build 12 double crochet across the raw side of this middle patch. So that's still two stitches per row edge. So we're going to join our yarn with a slip stitch. Pull that tie in so we can pull the knot around. We're going to chain two. And here's what you've got to remember going forward. So when you chain two, before you leave, so if you're working on the side where there's already a square, before you leave, you gotta make sure you attach it. So you chain two and just poke your hook through the stitch at the side, right at the junction. So there's the row where the two rows meet and just slip stitch. So now we've attached our yarn to the side of that square. Now you're going to do what we just did. You're going to work 11 more double crochets all the way across that side. Try to evenly space them out. Work two across the edge of each stitch or each row edge. Don't stress it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Make sure you just grab pieces of the stitch. Don't wrap your hook all the way around the stitch because you don't want to pull up on the whole stitch. You just want to grab pieces of it. So you just stick your hook right through the stitch or through the turning chain and you just evenly work some double crochets along that side. All right, including my chain two, there's 12 double crochet worked across the side of the center block now. And you see we attached our chain two to the side of that square. Now, if, as you're working, you might see some pulling and some funny stretching. Don't worry about it. It will disappear as soon as we've completed our square. So don't worry too much about your edges. Um, everything is going to even itself out when we're done. When you get to the end of that row, you're gonna chain two, turn your work. Remember to skip that first stitch, double crochet into the next one, double crochet all the way back. And when you get back to that chain two, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. All right, I'm just working all the way back now. I've done 10, so there's my chain two counts. I've worked nine actual double crochets. 
My 11th stitch is going to be right here, so don't forget the top of that. There's stitch number 11, and now stitch number 12. Looks a bit funny, doesn't it? There's our turning chain. You know you have to work into the top of it, but it's wrapped around the edge of the other block. So here's where we get creative. We're going to double crochet by just picking up the loops that wrap around the edge. So you see I've kind of grabbed a couple loops. Now you don't have to grab both. You can grab the front, the back. You just want to grab the top of that turning chain despite the fact that it's attached. In fact, where you see it attached, that's where you want to target your stitch. You're just going to double crochet right there. And there's your 12th double crochet. When you finish that double crochet and you're up against a block, you want to join the top of that double crochet to the top of the adjoining row. So right where one row meets the next one, just to stick your hook through it and slip stitch, chain two to begin your next row. And before you turn, because you've chained up, you still want to attach that. So you're going to slip stitch into the top of that row. So you should have something that looks like this. Nice, neat little attachments as you go up. And now we need to turn our work. So this might feel weird. It might be a bit strange. I recommend you do this. Lay your square down. Poke your square to the back. Lay your hook on top of it so that you still have your, your hook and your loop. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here so you can see what I'm doing. So you lay your square down. You've turned. We want to work back this way. Make sure your hook is on top of that square and your yarn is also out front. You're going to pull it in that direction. And this stitch, so remember we always skip that first stitch. Remember to skip it. It looks a little funny because we are doing this sort of chain join thing. This is the stitch you skip right here. You're going to go to the next stitch and you're going to double crochet into it. There. So we've joined our yarn, chain two, joined, double crocheted, chain two, turn, work all the way back, work your last double crochet into the top of that turning chain, join to the row, chain two, join to the block next to you, Turn your work and then start your double crocheting all the way back. It will take a little getting used to. Don't get hung up on the, the joins. It will look very even, I promise. I'm going to go get the other square here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So to really exemplify what I'm talking about here, this is the nine patch I did. So not a single one of these squares is the same. We started with this middle piece. So that's the middle set of squares that were all sort of first the blue, then the, um, the green, and then the pink. So these ones, these squares were worked across the raw edge. You can see the little joins of, of sort of chain two join, double crochet join before you finish the row. And none of these look messy. They all look like they belong sort of joined to each other. This is the fun of building this patchwork with just double crochet and not having to do any sewing. So take your time as you're working. Remember, you want to make sure that every single row is joined to the block that it sits next to. You're only joining on one side because obviously there's nothing here. And when we work this block, we're going to join it to this one. So you only ever have to remember joining on one side. You want to make sure that you always have 12 stitches in each row. That includes your turning chain. And when you chain and turn and you leave a block, make sure you've joined it before you leave. And always skip that first stitch. When you're working the sort of these little side blocks, sometimes it looks a little more like you should be using it. Make sure you skip it. Always work into the second one. And if you're kind of lost, just count. Find your, your turning chain and then count back to your 12th stitch and make sure you skip that first one. So as long as you count and you've always got 12 stitches in each row, you're going to work six rows of each color. You'll be just fine. And there's no sewing. <laughs> I want to show you what it looks like 
when you are starting and finishing row five of your block. So there's row one, two, three, four, and here's five. I've just finished row five. I've made sure that it's joined and this might look a little funny uh, because this is the chain two from the previous block. So don't confuse it. If you have to, always take a moment to just lay your block down and you can sort of re kind of pull out your edges and see there's row six. So I've got six rows. I've only worked five. I've got a chain two turn work all the way back. And when I get back, I'm going to join to the top of that chain two. But that chain two is going to be kind of pulling in one direction. It might look like you've accidentally joined in the wrong place or maybe you've worked too many rows. Just take a moment before you ever pull anything out, lay it down, count how many rows you've got in each square, maybe re sort of pull out your corners and you'll see that that's actually going to get pulled perfectly into place once we join it when we're finished our sixth row of our second block. But just look for that. It might look a little funny as you're working. Don't worry about it. But if you get confused or you think you're lost, just put your block down, count your rows, you'll be fine. Here I am at the end of row six. I've worked my last double crochet into the top of my turning chains from the row before. And now I want to join to the top of that chain two of the other block. So I'm going to just stick my hook right through there, slip stitch to join, and now you can lay it down and take a look at it. At this point, you should have two nice, neat and tidy looking blocks. And if we ignore this one, look how cool that is. There, you've got a little checkerboard. So that's it. You can fasten off that color. Take a moment to weave in that tail. Flip it back over. Now we know we're working. So here we are. I'm going to make sure that my color block matches. So if it was sitting properly, there's our middle. Boom, boom, boom. We've now done the bottom right, the middle right. We're about to do the top right. And then we're going to flip the square and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So from here on out, it's the same thing. You always join your yarn in the side of that stitch right at the bottom of that first row. Chain two, join before you leave. So join to the block next to you double crochet evenly across so that you have 12 double crochets, including that chain two, worked across the side of that block, just like we did for this one and this one. So if you need to take a look at that, you can rewind. Chain two, turn, work all the way back, work your last stitch into the top of that chain two. It might look funny, it will be attached, so don't miss it. Make sure you join that row when you're finished. Chain two, join that row, and then turn your work and work your way back. It really helps to count the stitches in every row to make sure you're not going off. You don't accidentally do 13. You don't accidentally only do 11. So it really helps to count your stitches every single row. That will help keep you on track. Also, keep your little color block thing handy. <laughs> It'll help you remember what block you're doing next, especially if you're not doing the sort of checker block one that I'm doing. And just take your time add the rest of your blocks and I'll catch up with you at the tail end of our ninth block. Just another quick tip actually <laughs> before I let you go completely. When you get to the top edge of a block, so the very end of your entire square, and you want to work that last stitch, so I've got 10 stitches now, I want to work my last two. Remember that that chain two, so if you're working up the top edge of a chain two, it might be pulled sideways, it might look a little confusing, so if it helps, lay your square back down, make sure you know what you're looking at. You wanna work two stitches across that chain two. So I'm gonna put a double crochet in the bottom of it. And then the last one you do should be right in the top of that chain two. So it should be right in alignment with the rest of the top of those stitches. So my 12th stitch will be in the top of that chain two. There we go. And there's my 12 stitches, including that chain two that began all the way across that edge. And now I'm just gonna continue Make sure you join every row that butts up against a square. <laughs> You're going for as much squareness as possible. If you have a little bit of wiggly wiggly, don't worry about it because we're still going to be adding a border and that will help clean up any little mistakes. And here we are, all done. 
So to recap, there are our middle three. So we started here, added block two, added block three. Twisted it, added the bottom right block, and we were joining and crocheting across raw edges. As you worked each successive block, you joined it to the top of each row of the block you were building it against. And this is a great time to sort of make sure that you don't have any gaps, like you accidentally missed joining it. If you did, don't worry about it. Just cut some yarn and sew it with your yarn needle. So just put in a few whip stitches there and sew those little blocks together. It's not going to show. This is, after all, a patchwork piece. Then you can take a moment to just sort of stretch it out, lay it flat, make sure that everything looks nice and neat and orderly. Remember, this isn't blocked. We haven't added our border. So if you feel like it looks a little bit ripply or messy, we're not done yet. All of our squares this year are going to get the same little border treatment. Just a single row of double crochets. There'll be 36 double crochet stitches worked along each side of our squares and a little chain two corner space on each one. That's just to finish off the square and make them all uniform so that when we finally put all of our squares together, regardless of what you did, <laughs> that little white border will just unify your blanket. So I'm using white. You of course can use whatever border color you want, but you want to stick to the same color throughout your blanket. So grab your square, grab your border color, and let's add a little border row. Up until this point, it hasn't mattered what side was right or wrong because we flip and work back and forth with every single little square. So here's where you get to take a moment to sort of take a good close look at your square, decide which maybe side you like the best, and that can be the right side of your square. We're going to take our border color now and make a slip knot. And with the right side of your square facing you, you're just going to pick it up so that you're working along a side, uh, an edge, since every single side of our square is going to get the same thing. It's just easiest to start with a row that is all stitches. So for example, this row has sort of raw edges and every other row has just regular stitches. So it's just easier to start with a row edge that's all stitch tops. You're going to join your yarn with a slip stitch. Remember to keep that string pulled towards the inside of your work. And we're going to begin by making a complete corner. So we're going to chain four to begin. The first two chains counts as a double crochet. The next two chains counts as the chain two corner space. And into the same place that we joined our yarn, we're going to double crochet. So this is actually the first stitch for this side. So this little double crochet is the first stitch to be counted on this side, and the chain two is the last stitch to be counted on that side, but we'll catch up to that when we get there. You can weave your tail in later or work over top of it, and because you've got nice simple edge stitches to work into, you should have 12 stitches per square or color block. You're going to work across the top of those squares. You'll have 36 double crochets at the end of the first side of our little border row. So just double crochet into each of those stitches all the way across. Don't forget, as you're working across the tops of those stitches, it's really great if you count because that'll help keep you on track. But that 12th stitch across the top of that block will probably be the top of a chain two, so don't miss it. And if you're unsure, just pause and count those stitches. So remember, this is the chain, this sort of part of this is the other side. <laughs> so just count that double crochet. You should have 12 stitches across the top of that block before you move on to the next block. 12 across here. Don't forget that that top of that chain two requires a stitch. Before you leave, make sure you've got 12 stitches across that block. Same thing for this one. And I'll catch up with you when we get to the top of that chain two. All right, just to recap, we chained four to begin. That counts as a double crochet chain two corner. So ignore that first bit. You should have 12 double crochets running across the first block, 12 double crochets running across the middle block, 
and 12 double crochets running across the last block. So I've got 11 here. I'm about to work number 12 into the top of that chain two. But since it's also the last stitch in the row, we're gonna also make a corner. So we're gonna double crochet into the top of that chain two. So there's stitch number 12. That means I've got 36 double crochets now running across the side of that block. I'm gonna chain two for a little corner space and before I leave, I'm going to work another double crochet into that same stitch. And now I'm working across a raw edge. I still want 36 stitches, so there's some stitch tops, so those 12 stitches will be easy to see, but I want to fit 11 more stitches across the side of that blanket. So there's stitch number one. I need to work 11 more, 12, and 11, and then number 12 will be right here in the bottom. We're going to turn that into a corner as well. So just like we did when we were adding colors to the sides of those existing squares, you want to stick your hook through a couple pieces of a stitch. You don't want to go around the stitch. Just try to work two double crochet per edge of each side of the row. If you get lost, just lay it down, pull out that corner, count your stitches. You want 12 double crochet per block. All right, here I am finishing side two. I've worked 12 double crochets across the edge of each block. And as I got to the end of the block, I stopped and I counted to make sure I had 12 because I don't want to have the wrong number. You're going to remember, have 36 stitches across each side and four chain two corners. When you get to the very last place, you're going to work your last stitch in what is actually the top of this stitch here. So this is stitch number 12 for this block or stitch number 36 for the side of the block. I'm gonna chain two for the corner and before I leave, I'm gonna work another double crochet into the same place and that double crochet becomes the first double crochet on this side of the square. So same thing, you wanna make sure you've got 12 double crochet across each section and when you get to the last one, which will be probably the top of a chain two, depending on what direction you're going in, don't skip it, make sure you work double crochet, chain two, double crochet into it. Remember as you work your last row, you're working 12 stitches across the top of each color block. When you get to the end, don't forget that you began with a chain four and those first two chains actually counts as a double crochet, which means that's the last stitch in your row. So as you're working your last block, you want to put your 11 stitches evenly across the side, remembering that that chain two that began is actually the last stitch in the row. So that's my 35th stitch in this row, and I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the second chain of that chain four that we began the row with because that counts as my last stitch in the row. And then take a quick check. You've got four chain two corners and 36 double crochet in between each corner. If your numbers are good, you can trim your yarn off and weave your tail in. Remember when you're cutting your tails and you're doing some weaving, you want to weave your yarn back and forth a couple times across the same set of stitches. This will just help keep it from unraveling, especially if you're using sort of a slippery yarn. When you're all done, lay it down, pull out your corners. Remember that just like an actual pieced fabric square, until it's ironed, it doesn't really look perfect. So until we've assembled all of our squares together and given our blanket a bit of a blocking, don't expect it to look absolutely even and perfect. <laughs> but if you can't wait, just take a moment to stretch out the corners, maybe pull out the bottom edges, 
just so that all of your sides lay nice and flat. But remember, the trick to this is counting. So every single little block is six rows by 12 stitches. And if you've still got a little couple of spaces because you missed some joins, feel free to just go back in, sew them up with a little bit of matching colored yarn. Don't worry, it's not gonna show. <laughs> and that's it, that is block number one. The Nine Patch, a traditional quilt block pattern, but crocheted, no sewing required. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed January block number one. We have 11 more to go. And remember, you only have to make one, but if you're like me and you kind of get obsessed, <laughs> go ahead and try all the different color combinations we showed you, or even ones that you think of yourself. This is a scrap eating square. And remember, you could make 12 of these all on their own and put them together and have a complete blanket. <laughs> Every single one of the, of the squares we're going to show you this year can be used on their own multiple times or used in conjunction with other squares. They're all going to be the same size and if you border them all with the same color then no matter what you do you're going to have an amazing looking blanket at the end of the year. We hope you enjoyed that! We will see you soon here on the Jade and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week. Bye everybody! Hi everyone! This is Mom and Stitches. Thank you for watching. Here are a few other videos you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and you can also click the like button and the bell. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.